Okay, so sec section 6.5 in our book for Math 1050 is about the determinants and Kramer's rules. And and Kramer's rule. We've already talked about determinants, so this is going to be a little bit of a review for us. And then Kramer's rule is just actually a really useful technique for being able to solve um, a matrix equation or a system of equations. So our objectives today is to be able to evaluate the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix, which is really easy. Evaluate the determinant of a, that should be an n by n matrix. Um, we're going to do it differently than what the book is talking about. And then finally, applying Kramer's rule for solving a system of equations of a matrix, a system of equations, or, sorry, a matrix equation. All right, um, so review, finding the determinant. Um, like I said, this is really something we already talked about. With a 2x2 two two matrix, you take your one main diagonal, multiply that, and you're going to subtract from it the one secondary diagonal, and that's going to give us our determinant. When we get bigger, we still just look at our main diagonals and our um, secondary or our minor diagonals. So in a 3x3, three three, we have three main diagonals, A, F, J, B, G, H, and then C, D, I, and we're going to multiply those. So we have A, F, J, plus B, G, H, plus C, D, I, and then we're going to subtract the multiplication of the um, secondary diagonals or the minor diagonals. So we have C, F, G, G, I, D, and J, or sorry, not D there. It should be G, I, A, and then J, B, D. So C, F, H, plus G, I, A, plus J, B, D. And so we subtract those to be able to get our determinant. One other way that the book suggested, this is called the diagonal method, but what you can do is, I don't particularly like it, but I can keep track of my diagonals like this, but they do A, B, C, B, A, and then D, F, G, F, D, and H, I, J, I, H. And this way you can see, okay, here's first diagonal, second diagonal, third diagonal, and then going the other direction, first diagonal, second diagonal, third diagonal. And so that can just help you. So if you can't figure, see the wraparound part of the diagonal method, you can look at it that way. All right, so other notations for the determinant, it's kind of like the absolute value of a matrix. So determinant A can be rewritten as like the absolute value bars or brackets of A. <clears throat> now remember an important thing about the determinant, it has a really um, important connection to the inverse. So in order for a matrix to have an inverse, and so in order to be able to solve a matrix equation or a system of equations, we have to have a square matrix and the determinant cannot equal zero. And we're going to see a little bit more of that. We already did it with um, a shortcut for being able to find the inverse matrix of a two by two, but now we're going to see its important um, application in the Kramer's rule. Okay, so Kramer's rule, first of all, we can start out with a system of equation or we can start out with a matrix equation. Either way, um, if we have a system of equation, we want to write it as a matrix equation. And our focus is going to be um, this matrix and then what we're going to change it into. So first we want to find the determinant of this matrix. And I'm going to go ahead and use the notation of, we're going to call this matrix A. And we're going to say that this is the determinant. Of so first thing we do is we multiply the main diagonal and we're going to get diagonals negative 20 plus 27 and minus 63 and then we're going to subtract the secondary diagonals 
<clears throat> so we have 12 and we have 35 and we have 81. All right, so when we simplify this, we have negative 56 minus 128, which is going to give us a determinant of negative 184. So now Kramer's rule, basically what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this, and we're going to come up with uh, three new matrices. Matrix X is going to be what we get when we replace column 1 with our matrix B. So instead of 5, 3, 1 for our column 1, we have negative 14, 2, 6, and then the other columns stay the same. So that's going to be our matrix X. Our matrix Y, same principle, we're going to replace the second column, the Y column, with um, matrix B. So we still have 5, 3, 1. Now this is negative 14, 2, and 6. And the third column stays the same. And then finally, the Z matrix is replacing the third column. So we still have 5, 3, 1, and 27, negative 4, 7. And then finally, this last one's going to be negative 14, 2, and 6. Okay, so one thing I noticed when I was looking up at the top of my system of equation that um, instead of putting 27y down, we actually have 37. So I'm going to replace this really quick with 27y and make sure that everything's consistent. All right, so with Kramer's rule, we want to find each of these determinants. So we're going to do the determinant of x, and that is going to give us 56 for the first diagonal, and 162 for the second diagonal, and then negative 42 for the third diagonal. And then minus, we're going to do our um, minor diagonals, our secondary diagonals. So our first secondary diagonal, we have 72. Our second one, we have negative 98. And then our third is 54. So if we simplify this down, we get 148. We're going to do the same thing with y finding its determinant. So we know that the first diagonal is going to give us 10, plus the second diagonal is going to give us negative 14, and then the third diagonal will give us negative 54. Then we're going to subtract going the other way, the minor diagonals, and we have negative 6 plus 30 plus um, negative 42. So if we simplify this, we get negative 40. And finally, we're going to do our determinant for matrix C. So we have negative 120 plus 54 minus 294 and then subtract our minor diagonals and we get 56 plus 70 plus 486 and if we simplify all that down we get negative 972 so now Kramer's rule basically if I want to know the value for a given variable, what I can do is I can say the variable x is equal to the determinant of x, the matrix x, over the determinant of the original equation. So in this case, we would say 148 over negative 184. And simplify that down, and that would give us the value for x. 
the value for y would be the determinant of y over the determinant of the original matrix. So in this case, negative 40 over negative 184. And then finally, z is equal to the determinant of z over the determinant of the original matrix. So negative 972 over negative 184. So to simplify this down, we want to rewrite this as negative 37 over 46, 46, sorry. And then we want to write this one as 5 over 23. And then finally, C can be written as 243 over 46. All right. All right, so another example here. This is matrix A. We need to write matrix X, which is equal to 4, negative 12, 8, and then 1, negative 3, 2, negative 3, 9, negative 6. We need matrix Y, which is still negative 1, 3, negative 2, but now 4, negative 12, 8, and negative 3, 9, and 6. And then finally, matrix Z, which is negative 1, 3, negative 2, 1, negative 3, 2, and 4, negative 12, 8. Okay, once we have these, we're going to find the determinant of each matrix. So for matrix A, we have um, the first main diagonal, which is negative 18 plus negative 18 plus negative 18 minus the secondary diagonals. We have 18, negative 18, sorry, um, minus 18 again, and then minus 18. So we have dA is equal to 0. All right, so this right here tells us that this is a um, singular matrix and that there is no solution. But let's go ahead and uh, find the determinants of x, y, and z, and then talk about, using Kramer's rule, why there is no solution. So we know that dx is going to be equal to equal to the, sorry, the main diagonal, which is going to be 72 uh, plus 1 times 9 times 8, which is 72 again, plus negative uh, 3 times negative uh, 12 times 2, which is 72 again, minus the secondary diagonals. So we have 72 and 72 and 72. So in this case, our determinant for x is also equal to 0. dy, or the determinant of y, is equal to 72 minus 72 minus 72, then minus the secondary um, diagonals, which is going to give us negative 72 plus negative 72 plus 72. All right, so this one also equals 0. And then dz, we have the diagonal of 24 um, plus 24 plus 24 minus 24 um, plus 24 
plus 24, so this also equals 0. Okay, uh, so this is just a coincidence. This doesn't always happen when you have a determinant, original determinant, that equals 0. But if we use Kramer's rule, then basically what we have is 0 over 0 for all of these. And we know that we cannot divide by 0, so there is no solution. equal to 11, 8, 4. So we want to set up our matrix X eleven sorry eleven eight four negative five seven negative nine one negative four two matrix y two three one eleven eight four one negative four two and matrix z two three one negative five seven nine 11, 8, 4. And then we're going to do the determinant of each of them so that we can sh set up our ratios of the determinant of x over the original determinant, the determinant of y over the original determinant, and the determinant of z over the original determinant to e get z, y, all right, so DA, the original determinant, we have 28 plus 20 plus negative 27 minus 7 plus 72 plus negative 30. All right, so this is going to equal negative 28. So we're going to do the same thing with matrix X. First, we have 154 plus 80 minus 72 minus 28. plus 396 plus -80 so this simplifies down to -182 moving on to the determinant of matrix y we have 32 um, -44 plus 12 minus 8 minus 32 minus 66 and so all of this ends up equaling 48 and then the determinant of Z is equal to 56 minus 40 um, plus 297 minus 77 plus 144 plus negative 60. So all of this equals 152. So we have <coughs> For x, we have negative 182 over negative 28. And for y, we have 48 over negative 28. And for z, we have 152 over negative 28. 
So x simplifies down to 6.5. Y sim simplifies down to negative 12 sevenths. And z simplifies down to negative 38 sevenths. So our solution for this system, if it was a system the equation to begin with, would be 6.5, negative 12 sevenths, and negative 38.